Okay, so I hit records and now it's official. Okay, I'm here today and uh, I got Excel open. I'm using the online version of Excel. For what we're doing in Excel, the online version one works just fine. If you want to use a full version, it's just got some more features and things on it. Um, but we're going over the basics uh, for charting. Let me just back up the big picture here. What's going on, Mr. Rio? Well, so far we used Excel to make various business type documents. We put in names of products or people or whatever, and we put in titles of whatever the sheet was about, like budgets or whatever. And we put in numbers and we calculated those numbers with various formulas and functions. We did averages, we did max, we did min, we did some, we added things up, some use a lot. Um, and then we did some custom ones like C5 divided by B5 or something like that for some of the ones we did. We even did an if function, which is one of the more challenging ones to do. So you got to see how that works with a variety of business type documents. Now we're gonna do something else that's widely used, including in the business world and elsewhere, and that's charting. That's where you have some information, some data, and you wanna turn it into a chart. And there's different types of charts, so you gotta figure out what type of chart do I want. And a lot of times you don't know until you try it out. And uh, so this is something that Excel is real popular for doing. People use Excel to make charts all the time. And then they share those charts with, you know, work or wherever they're, whatever reason they're doing it for. A lot of it is work, you know, stuff you're doing for a, a business. So what I'm doing here, I'm just double checking here that I got the right file set up here so that I don't have different data or anything than you got. Okay, I got my annual sales revenue. Annual sales revenue looks pretty good there. And then we got, uh, we got the next one is trees, about trees. And some of these I could spread out a little bit more here. Okay, and then the last one is we're gonna redo our budget. Now, this is one, we're not gonna do this chart today. I'll save the last, I'll do two today and then I'll save two for Thursday. You might say, Mr. Rio, can we use the same budget we did before? But if we do, how do we get it from that workbook to this workbook? You could literally go back and find the original one, put your cursor up here. Now this one wasn't finished, doesn't have the monthly budget or whatever. I didn't actually make this, this came from a student. Um, you could literally drag like that in one workbook, do a copy, you know, Command C, or if you're on a Windows computer, Control C, do a copy, open up a completely different workbook, put your cursor somewhere up here in the first cell and do a paste and you would end up getting this. So you can do that, copy and paste between them. Okay, let's go back to game sales. Um, now I'm just looking at what I have in the PDF right here. You can't probably see that on here, but um, you have game sales, you have boggle, code names, exploding kittens, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So you have the month and you have sales and items sold per month. How many items did you sell total? Now what I don't have here is this here. So watch the, how easy this is. I click there, I leave this one blank and I wanna add that up. I go up here, see the Greek looking letter E? I click on that and it does auto sum. So there's the amount right there. Now what I can do is drag this across here Okay, and do a fill right. So it'll take this formula, this sum function, and go all the way to the right. So I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, fill. Why don't I see, oh, I was up in Chrome. I was in the wrong one. So if I'm gonna do a fill there, I go to, whoops, I don't go there. I gotta get a little bit, I'm used to going to the edit menu way up above, but I'm not in that particular one. Let me see if I can do a right click here. Delete, clear, insert, sort, I don't see a fill there. How do I do the fill right in this one? It's hidden in here someplace.
Hmm. That's a, what's on the online version. It is different. Okay. Well, I'll just do the auto sum down here. Okay, so I got to click that and click the a little bit longer than the fill right, but I'm used to the other version of Excel. And I don't know where they hid the fill right in here. It's somewhere in here on one of these menus. Okay, now I'm going to format this whole thing here. I'm going to do it all in currency. Because these are sales. And I'm going to center it. Okay, I can spread some of these out here a little bit. Okay, you might say, Mr. Rio, isn't this about charting? Yeah, but we first got to make sure our data is okay. Okay, now, like I said, I got this from a student to save me some typing. They didn't drag this all the way across, so the, uh, let me see if I can still fix it. No, it's not letting me fix it right now. Okay, I was going to try to fix the merge and center on that. Okay, let me try this again. Merge and center, there, I got it fixed. Okay, I think it's fixed up now. It's got the totals in there. Now, looking at the PDF you had, this come from the top of it. Let me, I, all right, you guys got the PDF. So this is the first one, game sales, got the total items. Oh, no, I just screwed up. It's total items, not total dollar amounts. So I got to highlight all that and change it back to general. Okay. So it's just items. We're just uh, how many boggles did we sell? How many code names did we sell? How many mad gabs did we sell? And so forth. Now, this one here, we're going to do. Um, we're going to do a chart. So what's a chart going to be about? Uh, it's, we got our games. We got our months and our game sales. I'm going to first highlight all this, but the added up parts. Total items sold per month. I'm just, and we might say, why are you doing that way, Mr. Rio? Because right now we just want to know how many of these we sell for the month, not total of everything. So we want these categories right here. Now, what did I select? I selected this here. I selected the months. I selected the dates here. I selected the game sales. Now for charting, you might, I, I don't always know what kind of chart I may want to use. So I'm going to go to insert right there and recommended charts. I click right here. You got the different type of charts right there. I'm going to click recommend charts and it's bringing up some options here and showing me a couple of options. If I go to the first option here, I'm going to get a chart that looks like this. Okay, it looks like it breaks it out by month and then shows you your different sales for the month. That's not bad. Uh, they got this here, another chart. And I got this one, a little confusing looking. And that one and that one. Okay, I think this one might be usable. So I'm going to click, I can just click right here, insert chart. It's going to put a chart down below. I can close this here out. And I can click on here and drag like this. I'm going to put it down below here. Okay, so I got to take a look here. And I realize my biggest problem here is I don't have a key for this. So we got the months we don't have. Oh, we got the units. We got the months. We don't have all the games. So this is actually not going to work. Okay, now sometimes the problem lies in what you selected. So I'm going to go back. This time I'm going to leave game sales off of it. Okay, now I'm going to go back to insert. Recommended charts. I 
I'm going to try this one right here. Okay, that's much better. We now have, now you might say this here does, it looks kind of weird, Mr. Rio, multiple values by field. We're going to put game sales here. How do you do that, Mr. Rio, what you just did? I just double clicked that. Okay, double click that box came up. I renamed it game sales. And now let's take a look at this chart. Does this make some sense? I'm going to drag this out a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so we got game sales. We have our color code games. So we can look and see like, oh, what's in, in January? Oh, that's um, that's um, code name. It's a year. January, we got code names is a big seller. March, we've got, looks like Ticket to Ride's a big seller. So in other words, does the, when you look at a chart and you decide, is that the chart I want to use? Because here's the thing, my best advice to you, when you're making a chart and you just go to insert and recommend charts, or you can go straight to a chart right there. There's a variety of charts. If you already know what you want, you can click. There's column charts, there's line charts, there's pie charts, there's bar charts area charts, scatter charts, and other. So if you want to go straight to one that you think is going to work, go for it. Uh, for the type of data we have, I think this one here works pretty good. I can visually look at make sense. That's units. Now what I need to do is label what this is. How do you do that? Um, like I said, I'm used to the full version of Excel. So I'm going to click on here. I'm looking around for where those labels are. Okay, like I said, I'm used to the regular version of Excel, which is hard for me to do with you guys right now because I have the Mac version and most of you don't have Macs. Okay, well, I'm not going to worry too much about that. That's close enough. So how do you do a chart? You first have to have data in a worksheet whatever the data may be, you know. Now, the data doesn't have to have formulas and stuff on. Sometimes the data you have just is raw data. Then you have to select what you want included in that. Like, what are you trying to imagine? You want to visualize what the data is saying. So what kind of chart can do that best? So you try to get some idea. If need be, contact, um, uh, let's see here. Um, can I contact? Um, try out just just try out so this one here you can click recommend charts will bring up some charts they think are going to work oh over here formatting okay um the left axis here that'd be the vertical axis i'm going to click right there i'm looking to add category link to format code Okay. Horizontal access. Okay. This is some other, I thought it was for the titles. Okay. But right now this chart here works pretty good. So if you follow me and you did this chart here and it's got this info and you name this game sales up here, you're all set. Okay. Now I'm going to go down to, we're going to do one more day, Amazon. So what is Amazon? You got Amazon's annual sales revenue. I don't know why sales is not capitalized. And we got the year and the revenue. Now, you, you guys know Amazon is really, really big, you know, and they're getting bigger. This goes through 2019. They're even bigger now, the amount of sales that they have. So this one's going to be fairly simple. We're going to highlight this year. We're not going to highlight the Amazon annual sales. We'll put that in the chart another way. And we're going to click up here, recommend charts. And we can do Amazon sales like this. Okay, now I can do this here. I could do this here. Let's see. Revenue, I like this one. It's got revenue by billions. So I'm going to click on this one here. Click insert chart. Now, because we got a lot of room, I could put it right next to it here. 
Okay, revenue by billions. That sounds like Amazon, doesn't it? Now it says revenue by billions over here. So I think up here, I'm gonna change this here to Amazon sales. I should put Amazon annual sales. Okay, so all I did was change that. It's got dollar amounts and says here, this is by billion. So I'd be like over a hundred billion. It's got the years and it does a nice bar coming up. Um, you could resize that and stuff. So what is the purpose of a chart? A chart takes your data and it makes it visual. Okay, when we get to the budget, we'll make a pie chart. You'll see like, this is my whole budget, how much goes to rent, how much goes to food and so forth. This one here is Amazon sales. We can see from 2009 to 2019, they just kept going up and up and up and up. Okay, then I go back to the first worksheet. We're looking at games and how many units are sold by month. And we have a nice color chart here showing us this here. And down here, we can look up what the games are. Who is our big seller for March? In March, we need, uh, in March, Ticket to Ride the big seller. And April ticket to ride is the biggest seller for whatever reason that is the biggest one. It looks like these are in order. You know, the, you're down here with this up here. So I think that's a good job there. So that's an intro to charting. We'll do the trees and the budget on Thursday. Okay. But yeah, you just, um, and then when you're not sure, like what data do I select? Just select what you think is right and see what the chart looks like. And the chart doesn't look right, it probably means that you, you know, didn't select the data right. I'm gonna quit sharing my screen there. Now you guys could see me better. Okay, it's not a real exciting topic, but it is important to learn. And you, if you're gonna go into business or something like that, you're gonna be making a lot of stuff in Excel. You're gonna be making chart, you're gonna do charting in Excel. You're gonna get charts made in Excel. So, um, you know, this is the last thing we're learning. It's a nice feature in Excel. So without further ado, thank you for coming, Tyler and Hanson and Aiden and JD and Matthew and Sarita and Colin. So you guys have a good day. It's not real warm today, but you're warm up this week. Yep, take care, Aiden, take care, Tyler. Take care, JD, you have a nice day too. Take care, Colin and Hanson and Sarita and Matthew. So take care.